trying to play that defense through to the end of the match. So let's take a quick preview of our playoff match number four. In this one, we're going to have our number two seeded alliance led by Jack and the Bot, who picked 254 world champions and other world champions, 3175 Night Vision, the old re reunion. And on the blue alliance, Adrian, tell us about these teams. Well, you know, we have the Hawaiian kids who have rebuilt their robot. We have the team from New York here in uh, 694 and rounding out with a great steal um, in the draft, 604. Um, they all have a lot of firepower, and um, I think they're going to give the uh, Red Alliance a run for their money. Well, I think we're ready to meet these teams down on the field, so take it away, Andrew. Thank you, RSN. Playoff match number four. Interesting thing about this match, we have five different states represented of the six robots playing in this match. This just show how Chesley Champs really is the best, not only in the West, but maybe a little bit all over. And who's going to show us that? Starting off, we have 254. A team whose pajamas I'm wearing right now, that's the Cheesy Poofs. Their partner's ready to pop, 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 pop to the top. It's 29-10. From Bothell, Washington, that's Jack in the Bot. And rounding out the Alliance, they were on Einstein this year with their partners, 254. They made some magic happen. They're looking to do it again. It's 3175. From Gross Point Woods, Michigan, that's Night Vision. Over on the Blue Alliance. We're starting off with a strong team from the East Coast. Traveled all the way over here just to show Red Alliance who's boss. It's 694. That's Skyport from New York, New York. Speaking of traveling all the way over to California, probably traveled more than any other team in the world, it's Team 359. From Wailu, Hawaii, that's the Hawaiian Kids. And on the topic of traveling, while they definitely don't dribble the ball, they're definitely shooting hoops like an NBA superstar. It's 6.04. That's Quicksilver from San Jose, California. Oh, and the fourth team's on each alliance. I'm so sorry, friends, again. 6.49 on the Red Alliance, 8.46 on the Blue Alliance. M. Set Fish and the Funky Monkey. Our field is green, and it looks like these robots are ready. Playoff match number four. Drivers behind the lines. Three, two, one, go! Here we are in playoff match number four at Chessy Champs. That upper hub is already full. As these robots find their last few pieces of cargo to finish off this autonomous period, and the human player shot blocked by another blue cargo. But it's time for Teleop, 46 to 42, a four point advantage for the Red Alliance. That is a small gap to make up for the Blue Alliance though, and they certainly will try. 6 to 4 in position now. In for two when they're good. 6 9 for their Alliance partner from New York doing the same. 29 10, that little robot from Washington lining up, driving their cargo. They're both up. 254, our world championship winning cheesy poops. They've got their cargo, their dual side intakes. They've got the shoot on the move, not quite going in though. Looks like we have a sandwich going on between 254 and 359, but 3175 with two blue cargo in it, keeping 359 away from their scoring machine of 254. The score is now 90 to 70. Advantage Red, Red is definitely growing that lead. The blue has over a minute to finish it out. 3175 keeping 359 at bay, but that's leaving 604 and 694 to do whatever they please. 254 up for two more, both a little bit wide, and 694 sinks two for the blue line. 604 now in place and up for one. 2910 up for two more. We've got 51 seconds left, only a 20 point lead for the Red Alliance. Blue can certainly make this up. 604 grabbing cargo, 694 looking for one as well. 29-10, spinning around, turning back around. They've got two. Can they get them up? Of course they can. 31-75 doing an excellent job 
keeping both 359 and 694 at bay. That sound means it's climbing time. Let's see who's gonna make the top of the race to that traversal run. 2910 in position, 694 in position. 2910 flying up those rungs. They're on the high, Poop's going up next to them. 2910 on the traversal. 359 on the, nope, oh no. Looks like they figured it out though. They're hooked on, Poop's are up. 359 is up, 694 maybe. 254, we'll see if that counts. We've got your official scores coming in a moment. We've got some scores for you. And it'll be the Red Alliance tickets 175 to 147. Let's take a look at our bracket. The Red Alliance will be moving on to play match number eight against our third alliance. While the Blue Alliance will be moving on to match number six to play against alliance number six. Over to RSN. A huge score posted by that number two alliance. This really is going to be exciting as we go through the day to see what else they can do and who could keep up with that 175 points. Adrian, how did they put so many points on that board? I mean, 254 and 2910 were basically running all over the field, scoring any time they wanted to. Um, they, they saw maybe a little bit of defense, but it did not slow them down in the slightest. And then 3175 um, was helping um, them with defense, helping them a little bit with ball control. Um, we did see 254's climber maybe not deploy all the way at the end of the match. So, uh, you know, they had seven, 175 points and could have done more. Really could have. We also saw 3175 at the end of that match looking like they were dead on the field, so they're going to want to go look at what went wrong there and see if they can patch that up for the next round. But Blue Alliance trying to play not really dedicated defense, some hybrid there, um, and they really weren't able to slow down the Red Alliance at all. However, 147 points is a very respectable score, so they're going to probably have a strong chance in the lower bracket moving forward to make their run back and try and take that uh, rematch against the number two alliance or whoever is waiting for them later in the tournament. I want to take us down to replay for these last 30 seconds of the match where I think there's just a couple interesting and highlightable notes here. One is first, to start with, this is late in the match. We've got 3175, who's been the primary defensive bot of this alliance. And if you watch closely, they've got two blue balls inside of their robot. 
Why would they do that, Adrian? They're a red robot. Well, if you can keep ball, uh, cargo away from the blue alliance, that is less cargo than they can score, that they can actually pick up and score. Um, so that's a defensive strategy that's been used a lot during the season, but we haven't seen it a ton here at Jazzy Champs. And because this alliance played together in the World Championship, they're clearly someone who's ready for that. As well as we've got the Cheesy Poofs, who with 20 seconds are still driving around and shooting balls and go to make that climb. But if we watch closely here, they do have their issue. They start to go up, they make the reach for the, high, the highest of the high bars, the traverse bar. They grab it, but then they never quite let go of the other bar and just hang out there so they don't get the full points. So points left on the table, even though they had a big high score here going to be a tall task for uh, other alliances to keep up with that. We'll see if anyone tries a different strategy. So thinking back over this first round, we've played four matches now. Everyone's got the chance to go on the field. We know a little bit about round two. What do you think the keys of these different types of play have been, Adrian, after watching this first round? Well, it looks like a lot of our alliances opted for that triple offensive strategy. And in a few cases, it worked. But in the majority of the time, it didn't. Um, every single red alliance advanced forward. Um, and so and almost all of the blue alliance uh, strategies were to play triple offense. Um, now. Is that because that strategy doesn't work? Not necessarily. It just means that in these matches, those Blue Alliance uh, members were just outgunned by the Red Alliance in most of these cases, which is why they were a high, higher alliance to begin with. So going into this second round, the stakes are going to get raised. So Evan, tell us what happens in match number five and six here. So five and six is our upper bracket. Those teams still have two lives left. Actually, we're going to play them as our lower brackets first. So we'll play things a little bit out of order here. So the highest stake matches come up first. We're all learning this new format together. Okay, <laughs> stakes are super high for match five and six. This is our lower bracket. You don't have any more lives left. Now, on the, on the good side, these are all the teams that didn't win their first round matches. They should be closer matches than, than uh, some of them played in the first round because they're not, you know, one versus eight. On the, on the downside, if you lose this, you are out. This is the end of the line for two of our teams at this tournament. And that, to me, is why this gets to be so exciting. So you didn't win your first match. You were going up against a number one seed or a number two seed. They're really powerful alliances. But you, get, you got a chance to warm up. You got to play someone really hard. And now you get to come back and try to play against someone who might be a better even match that your strategy might work better on and get another shot at the tournament. Big decisions here. What strategy are you playing? Which three of the four robots are you playing? Because you've got to leave it all on the field now. Make your choices, commit, and execute. So up next, we're going to give away our first award of the Chessy Champs. So we're going to send it down to our field to begin our award ceremony. All right, everyone. Welcome.